All right, so today I've got the car up and uh, it's because I got to do some stuff. I need to uh, do my slave cylinder. I know it's going out. So when I did the coil over install, um, I did notice that it was kind of wonky, just not good, no bueno at all. So hopefully, um, hopefully it's the right part. I don't remember if I gave them the right year or not since I guess I'm not 100% sure what year the swap is. But uh, anyway, so I got this from the O and uh, yeah, this is what I'm gonna be using. So first thing is to jack it up, get it on jack stand. It's over there, you just can't see it. But anyway, you can get the wheel off and then you'll have access to it right behind the wheel to the left side. So um, yeah, I'll uh, set this down and we'll start getting that done. All right, so got my key and my 19 uh, for the splines. Also know you're gonna want a little drip pan unless you wanna be cleaning stuff out of your, your driveway. So let's uh, go ahead and get this wheel off. So there's a slave right there, slave, slave cylinder. So I can see like the bushing is torn and yada, yada, yada. Let me get a better angle. So that's it right there. That, that right there is it. But uh, yeah, so it's just torn. Um, it doesn't look to be leaking like wet from the clutch fluid um also known as the brake fluid but yeah anyway so it just looks like uh it's gonna be i don't know uh 210 mils so i'm gonna go ahead and get my wrench out and get those off and then it's also gonna be the line going in there once i take that line off it's gonna start leaking uh, pretty much everywhere so what i'm gonna do is get that line off first then let it leak in the pan. So we get this pan under here first, let it leak in there, because if you take the bolts off first that hold it to the transmission, that hold the, the slave cylinder to the transmission, then you're gonna be fighting, you know, trying to hold that thing in place to get that thing loose and God knows how tight or not tight that is. So anyway, let me go ahead and get some tools. Okay, so the line feeding it is an 11 mil and the bolts are not 10, they're 12. So this is what I'm using, just long extensions to get to those bolts. Um, if I have to use the 12 uh, wrench, then that's what I'll use on the bottom one. So let me take this out now. Help yourself to some poop. There's a little coke in the pad. Yeah, there ain't much in there. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I can't say too much either. <laughs> yeah. No judgment. <laughs> All right, so 11 mil is unscrewed now, so that could just hang there, and that's just dripping off into there, just like we want it. So I'm gonna come. So I got my 12 mil here. And what we're actually gonna do is just wipe my hand off real quick because I got the stuff on my finger. It's probably a good idea to change this stuff anyways because the fluid in there is pretty dark brown right now. So I'm gonna take this top bolt off. All right, got that loose. This bottom one. So I'm not going to be able to do it with that. Just have to get in there with the 
the wrench. So tight for what? All right, so here it is. So we've got two bolts that just hold it in like that. And we got the line that's still leaking, but it's just kind of sitting there waiting for us to put the new one on. But we we'll put the new one in there and try to mess with it and get this one open. Huh? Why? What happened? Yeah, that's marketplace. That's marketplace for you. Yep. All right, so here it is, side by side. So this one here, look, is all torn. Like, it's just how it was. Like, I didn't just rip this now. Boot was torn, and then that's when I knew. I was like, oh yeah, okay, you know, something's up. So anyways, get the boot on the new one, as it came with it off, and we're gonna put that, let's see here. Just put this in here real quick. Doesn't go in very far, but just kind of play with it. But yeah, we just match it up. And yeah, it looks, it looks legit. So I'll pop this cover off here. This is where that leaking line goes into. So. Let me go ahead, take these old bolts out, move all this out my way. So that is now all junk. Now that we confirm this will actually work. So I've got everything hand tight, mocked up there. Slide that pin in first, compress the, the slave in this way, right? And then you get the bolts in, and then you can hook up your hydraulic line. So make sure before you tighten your line, that you go ahead and tighten your bolts. So grab this, we'll get the top one. That should be it. And then grab my 12 millimeter once again, or if I can find it. Here it is. Now when I got this the first time, I don't know why. It was so freaking tight, but this thing was just stupidly tight. I had no business being that tight. Nope. And now we'll go ahead and tighten this line down. And again, it just needs to be tight enough. You know, it just needs to be snug. This, this does not need to be something crazy, so. You can always make it a little bit tighter too. If you need to, so keep it loose. Not loose, but snug it up and if it wasn't enough, then go ahead and, you know, give it a little bit more if it's leaking. So now um, we're gonna go on top, check the reservoir level, which I'm sure for me it's probably freaking empty because there's no way I could do it quick enough. Yeah, so. First thing, first thing, first thing, first thing, get your dot three. And if you're not sure which one it is, you can always look on your cap. And this one says, use only dot three fluid from a sealed container. 
yada 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 the reason why i can put y'all on some game for anybody for anybody who doesn't know i'm sure somebody doesn't know um that's not a bad thing either the the brake fluid you don't want to just keep it on the shelf it's hydroscopic so um basically it goes it's gonna go bad after a while once that seal is broken it will go bad even if it's like oh you took some you poured it in and then you came you know time later you know x amount of time later um you know it could be contaminated so that's why it says you know sealed container you always want to make sure it's new um i don't just i don't just keep that kind of stuff i i had to buy new because you know i just don't i don't use it enough so um once i've kind of once i've kind of used it i want to really take the gamble i'd rather just get the fluid it's cheap enough so anyway um we're gonna go ahead and grab a funnel This one might be too big. So, a little funnel like this will work just fine. Throw it in there. And we'll go ahead and fill this up um, to the max. And then we'll start uh, doing the bleeding on it. And then I'll show you guys how to bleed it. So first, fill it up, make sure there's fluid in there before you start bleeding. All right, so we've got it full right there to the max. You could do it a little bit more. I mean, fluid's gonna come out because we're bleeding it. Another thing to note about brake fluid, go ahead and just make sure you put the cap back on for you know safe practice just so you don't kick it over, but don't let it touch your paint. Uh, this will ruin your paint faster than you can imagine. So you wanna make sure well, you wipe your funnel, you know, don't drag it across your paint, nothing like that. Um, that's why you'll see people put socks. Here, I'll show you on the bike. I'll show you. I don't have one, but people will put the socks around here in case this cracks or leaks or something so it doesn't damage your paint everywhere else. So that's kind of the idea behind that. So now I will uh, go ahead and uh, pump the pedal a couple times. Basically what we're doing is we're we're moving that fluid into the slave that we just put on because the old one had the fluid in there but obviously it leaked out so we gotta push this and get that fluid back. So right now there's gonna be no pedal at all. None whatsoever. Alright. You just have no pressure. So basically hold that there all the way down to the bottom and then we're gonna crack the bleeder open and close, but obviously this is kind of going to be a two-man job. Um, there is a way to do it, one man, but I'm just going to do two men. It's a lot easier. So let me go get my help, and then uh, we'll show you how to open and close the bleeder. All right, so now um, let's go ahead and I'm very disorganized right now. It's just, this is not me, but I'm not in my work clothes. I'm just not in the, not in the zone. So anyways, the bleeder is on the far right right here so i'll go ahead and show you where the bleeder is on the old one it's got a little cap on it which actually i'm gonna boom gang that it's just so it doesn't get any rust or anything like that but the bleeder's on the far right so all we're doing my person's holding the pedal i'm gonna crack this open and then close and then my person's gonna go in there pump that pedal a couple times hold it down i'm gonna open it back up fluid's gonna go everywhere close yada 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 so that's what we're doing All right, so we got it. Um, you could put uh, a clear line, just some uh, hose or some, you know, whatever, and then zip tie it. That way your fluid can drain out and straight to your pan. I kind of just sent it and just let it do what it's, what it's doing. Really didn't matter to me too much, but uh, yeah. So anyway, we've got it bled and that's it. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and start it up. Just make sure everything is good. It goes into the gears good. Um, and then also make sure once you're done bleeding and while you're bleeding, you know, just keep your eyes on the level. And once you're done, go ahead and just top it off. But if this runs out of fluid while you're bleeding it, you kind of just defeat the purpose um, because air is gonna get trapped back inside. That's all it can suck if there's no fluid. So you gotta constantly keep the fluid in there. But anyway. Um, I'm gonna start it up. I said make sure it's good through all the gears and then uh, we'll be straight. This thing will be ready. 
Um, I am going to be going out to OSW tomorrow to uh, attend like this little drift thing. Um, I'm not driving, but uh, I'm just going to spectate, watch, hopefully make some friends, meet some people, get some leads on stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, because apparently I need I need battery tie down. I need a hard top or a roll bar um, before I can even before I could even get any seat time out there on the track. That's not even including like other stuff I gotta do. So yeah, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a long journey. But you know, here we are little bits at a time and uh, that's all we could do. So yeah, let me just go ahead and make sure this is straight and uh, and we'll be good here. Oh yeah, this pedal feels real nice. So here we go. Never went into gear this good. But shifter bushings are effed. Mega effed. So, yeah, started out that work. That work is fine. So, really, the only thing that I need to do now is uh, just check the leaks. If any. So, Make sure it's straight. Yep. So, yeah. and, uh, like I said, I'm going to be going to OSW tomorrow, so there'll be another video going up. Lotuswheel.com. And uh, we'll be good. So, appreciate y'all watching. And uh, I hope you learned something from this today.